Good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to our uh, webinar on visual backnet uh, with troubleshooting common backnet problems. There's a lot of them out there, but we are gonna focus on just four of them today, or five of them today, I should say. I will be presenting, my name is Ryan Hewson. I'm the Director of Business Development here at Optical Networks. On the call as well is Tom McGee. He's our sales engineer. Uh, if there's any, any uh, support questions or anything else that, that you would like to ask, then uh, Tom is our guy. Feel free at any time throughout the webinar to ask some questions. I, as this is only half hour, we'll try and get to it. And if we don't, we will make sure to answer it after the webinar ends. As always, please fill out our survey at the end. It really helps us fine tune our content and make sure we're delivering it at the, uh, the right speed and, uh, and content. And as always, this session is re being recorded at youtube.com slash optical networks. <coughs> Now, at Optical Networks, uh, under the YouTube channel, there's already, uh, I believe, six individual webinars that target other troubleshooting aspects of this. So this is more of a, a recap, but there's, uh, there's definitely some more, a lot of good content on YouTube to learn more about how to deal with this, uh, with backnet systems and how to make them optimized and work correctly. Okay, so we're going to start with unresponsive devices, but we're going to cover the following topics of unresponsive devices, duplicate BBMDs, circular networks, duplicate networks, and duplicate device IDs. Each one of these are a, a check that we do within visual backnet, so it's very easy to see and uh, see if this is a problem within your network. What we're going to show you is how to deal with them specifically. An unresponsive device is quite varying. There's a lot of different ways that this can show up and be a problem. And these are gonna be ways that you can go through and troubleshoot them specifically. So a responsive device on your network is quite simple. It is something asks a question, who is, could be a full broadcast, could be specific, and it's expecting a response from a device out in the network. In this particular case, we go, who is device 249? Well, if everything's working correctly, uh, device 249 responds back, and it says, hey, I'm the guy you asked for, and the source was maybe your front end BMS system or another device asking uh, who this device is. This is a responsive device. This and uh, uh, who is it an IM isn't the only conversation it could have. It could be asking for data. It could be uh, some sort of data exchange. Either way, it's a source asking a device, an end device for the information and bringing it back. That's a responsive device. These are good things to have. This makes your network work very, very well. However, when we have an issue, it now becomes an unresponsive device. Now there's a difference out there between unresponsive and offline, which is why we call it inside visual backnet, we call it an unresponsive device. This means that we asked a question, say who is device 249, and we did not receive a response. So there's a lot of reasons why device 249 is not responding. One could be maybe it shouldn't exist. So maybe somebody, accidentally put in a bad graphic link or put in some piece of data exchange under the source, which could be the backnet server at this time. And it's asking for this device when it shouldn't even be there. Maybe some, some code was obsoleted uh, or decommissioned and something was still left inside of the database. This is what we call a phantom device. If you ever see this show up on your backnet front end as a, a device, sitting there with the little red X, then that's probably a pretty good indication that the device isn't communicating, but start with the uh, front end BMS because this is the one where the, something's asking for this device and it's not responding. This is as far as visual backpack can go. Now we're relying on you to figure out if the device is supposed to be on the network or not. 
Now, there's also the other side of this where maybe the device is supposed to be there, but it's just not answering us. So assuming that you've answered the question of, is the device supposed to be on my network? And the answer is yes. Then we come back and say, well, let's go find the device. Let's see if it's still online. Maybe it has no power. Maybe the network uh, communication cable has fallen off. Uh, maybe there's a break in the line. So that's another, another way to troubleshoot this device and to figure out, yes, it's supposed to be there. Now what happened to it? Again, if the device is okay, if it's powered up, then it's got to be something in the communication. Maybe the Ethernet wire changed, maybe a switch failed, uh, maybe an MSCP to IP router failed, and we're going to be able to figure that out. So now that you've defined what's in here, uh, it really helps you go figure out the next step. Now there's also another case where there's more than one device sending out uh, too many sources and the poor device just can't respond. So you could have, uh, back in the day before we had servers, we used to have just uh, backend clients and that's still out there today, but that could be a lot of different front ends asking who is request for the same device. And maybe the, the, the same device is getting overwhelmed. So it probably exists on the network, but it can't respond to all the requests. It's almost getting too much information. So in this way, that's an, another way that you can see it. If you're seeing uh, some unresponsive uh, devices every now and then, then that, that would be a case that possibly that end device cannot deal with uh, the amount of traffic that's coming into it. The next topic we have is called duplicate BBMD. So duplicate BBMD, although your entire backend system will still run, what happens here is you're gonna have one vendor, such as uh, these, the, the diamond boxes indicate a BBMD. Now, normally you're using a BBMD to cross uh, different switches so you can relay uh, information like a who is and an IM response between two different networks across a switch. Uh, you're basically relaying a broadcast information. So in this way, we're going to have one BBMD that connects to another BBMD to relay that message. The duplicate BBMD part means that you're going to have a second BBMD on that network. Not necessarily a problem, but what this creates is it doubles the amount of traffic that's out there. So if you're gonna send a who is request out the network, you're gonna send it twice, once from the first guy and again from the second guy. And then you get two sets of responses because you're relaying the information from the BBMDs and the other network. If the bigger the network you have, the more of doubling the data that you get. Now, this is pretty common out there in the world because you're gonna have vendor A, for example, saying, I wanna remotely connect into my network or have all my controllers communicate with each other as they're supposed to. And the second vendor that's on the network also wants the same functionality. And normally, because I sell a specific product, for example, I really don't want to use your BBMB for communication. And we get it, that makes sense but this is the byproduct of that. You're doubling the network simply because of not wanting to work with another vendor. So it's always good to figure out who is going to provide the BBMD services within a network so that you can ease the amount of traffic within that network. The lower the amount of traffic, the more likelihood everything's gonna run perfectly. So we have a flag in Visual Backend that will detect this and you'll know which vendors have more than one BBMD, and then you can work on figuring out who's going to stay there and provide that service. <coughs> Circular networks is another one that's unfortunately very, very simple to do. What it's showing us is you can have more than one service on a device. So example here on the left, You've got one, the ethernet packet on one device is working or the ethernet network is working. 
and on the other device, Ethernet and backed over IP are both enabled and working. So there's not, there's only the Ethernet path that's connected and that's working and that's fine. However, in cases where you get a circular network is that the path can be connected all the way. This is an extreme example, but you could go out through backnet IP or ethernet and then come all the way back down through backnet MSTP. That's a very, very rare case, but it's very easy to go out through ethernet and back through IP for those uh, vendors out there that support uh, backnet over ethernet. This is a real problem. And the challenge here is this is as simple as enabling a checkbox. There's very little uh, fencing within this design. So it's it's easy to do the whoops. Now the byproduct of it is the second that you enable a circular network, the packets are gonna be consumed so fast that you will not be able to go and get into the network and turn it off. So it's gonna require a physical visit to site. A visual backend has a check, it's right at the very top of the list and it's gonna tell you if this problem exists right away. And instead of figuring out why are your controllers offline, why aren't they working, uh, you just run this very quickly and it will give you all the information you need right away and tell you which devices are actually the problem, which again is key. So circular networks are bad. They're, they're definitely not helpful within your network. Duplicate networks are a little bit more challenging, but what these are showing you is you've got a router to a network and the router itself is designed to have a logical address on it to do routing. If you have more than one of these on your network, so you have two devices that are routing to a network, well, the challenge is, say device one is routing data to a network, which is simple. It's coming to all the, the circles on the first one. So everything below it knows how to work through the backnet network and get out and route to the rest of the network. If you accidentally put in settings so that router two was also routing data from those three devices on the same network, then two things are gonna happen. You're gonna get a lot of weird information sitting here on the first network. Typically the very first network or router to respond will pick up the rest of the controllers. But the byproduct of this is all of the devices on the second network that should be there and should be communicating will go offline simply because this guy number two is supposed to be routing those, but he isn't. So that's that you could coincide with your unresponsive devices to say, actually, they're supposed to be on the network. Where did that router go? And how come that's not being routed to the network? We are going to be able to find this because what we're gonna say is, hey, we're gonna find this device and this device, they're both being routed through these two devices. We will flag that and we'll be able to show you what devices are causing this issue. Then it's up to you to figure out that, hey, number one is supposed to be there, and oh yes, I, put, I accidentally put in the wrong number in device number two, so let's fix that up. He will then go back into this network and work correctly. So duplicate network can be a little nasty device, but a uh, good thing is we've got to check to figure that out and make that work for you. So once that's corrected, networks come back, uh, all of your devices that were in unresponsive uh, devices list will come back and come online. So duplicate device IDs, these are a nasty little thing that happens when you take your backnet device ID and you put it in more than one controller that's on the network. Unfortunately, the byproduct here is it's very, very difficult to determine that. Usually the only way it's done is the control, as an example, the control that you set up for a room, say I've got a temperature sensor with a backnet ID on it, and we set it to device 1121. We've got a controller ID, something like a VAV controller, for example, that also has the same device ID. And these say these are software addressed and you, you put them in, somebody didn't update a list that you were working from, or things happen, right? You, you start addressing, go on coffee break, you come back and you start with your last number, right? It's, it's very easy to do. 
it's easy to make this mistake, but what happens is these devices are going to respond, whoever responds to a WHOIS request or a data request to 1121, whoever responds first is the information that's going to come back to the system. So what you might see in graphics here is you're going to get, uh, say, AI1, for example. AI1 could either be the temperature sensor or it could be the output temperature sensor of the VAV box. So you're going to have data flipping back and forth under your graphic, and it's going to it's going to change wildly. And that about is the only way that you can detect this from a backnet system. But through visual backnet, we can identify this right away and say, hang on, you've got more than one device with instance 1121. So you want to go back and change it. So again, we're going to ask and figure this out. And now the other device has uh, set it back. So the only real way to go and change this from your backup front end is identify the one device that's currently online, such as device 1121. It's there, it's on your network. Change that backend ID into something else. And then the original device or the other device 1121 will show up on your network. And now you've got both devices on your network. You may not have the right backend ID yet, but at least you can change it remotely. Once that's done, then you're going to regain regular control of those two devices and your graphics should come back to normal. This problem is very, very common in the backend MSTP devices with the switches simply because you can address say one, two, three, and then you go and someone else maybe picks up the rest of the network and does the rest of the addressing. And from there it goes into, maybe you start with three again and go four, five, and six. The challenge in MSTP is now you have to go back through the entire network and check everything. Here, it, we tell you exactly which device is duplicated. Say it's device five that was duplicated. Then you can, Forget about going to device one, two, three, and four. Let's just go straight to five. However, you are going to have to go back to five and everything higher because odds are they are uh, all misaddressed by being one lower than the one they should be. But at least you don't have to start at the beginning. So at that, we've got a few minutes for questions here. So please ask away and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, these are we definitely see these all the time within the visual backup files that we get and they are top of our list for trying to troubleshoot and help you out with the network there are no questions there's another webinar coming up this wednesday uh, it's called introduction to visual backnets so now that we've told you the five common problems we'll actually show you the tool on how we diagnose and find those issues directly. All right, well, if there's no questions, then we'll wrap this up, but feel free to send in any questions if you, if you like on the visual, on the optical website, there's a chat function. You can definitely get a hold of us at any time to help deal with your visual background problems uh, or any background problems in general. Thank you for your time. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. PST at 2.30 p.m. PST.